way. And if you're not a part of a church family, certainly you want to consider the, uh, the family people helping people group to really help you to process what's going on internally. Until next week's broadcast, uh, we wish you all the best. Continue to enjoy this new year that God has given you and make a difference in your life and in the life of others. God bless you. Take care. Order your copy of Adventures with Cohen by Keppa Bethel. To order, call 327-8719. That's 327-8719. Or order by email at adventureswithcohen at gmail.com. Order for your child, for your nephew, your niece, for your classroom, or even for your school. Order now while supplies last. You've been watching Grace Connect. Grace Connect is a production of Grace Community Church in Palm Meadow Village. You're also invited to watch The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, Sunday evenings and Wednesday mornings. We're also pleased to present Daily Hope with Dr. Rick Warren every Sunday afternoon. Thank you again for joining us today on Grace Connect. If you are hurting or have issues that you need to speak with someone about, then please feel free to contact us at the numbers on screen. These are very difficult times. Remember that God is there for you, and so are we. Until next time, may God bless and keep you. Welcome to the all-new CBS Pro Store. We'll be introducing various products such as plywood, sheetrock, metal stud, and a whole array of bulk construction products. But you can expect the same high level of service that you have been receiving at CBS Bahamas. We originally opened the store in 1980 as our retail location. Hearing from our customers that they wanted us to cater more to contractors, we decided to open the CBS Pro Store here at Robinson Road. So come by and visit us at CBS Pro Store on Robinson Road, where we can help you build beautiful. Zeleness wants to thank all those who entered the new college freshman giveaway. And out of all the entries, 15 finalists have been chosen. These finalists will be receiving prizes from Comfort Suites, Security Depot, Atlantis Resort, Cafe Channing Noel, and BTC. We want to thank our sponsors for these wonderful prizes. We also want to send all contestants the very best wishes and good luck on a successful freshman year in college. Abuse. Domestic violence. Suicidal tendencies. Are you being stressed out from these problems? Call the National Hotline at 422-2763 or 322-2763. There are trained social workers available 24 hours to help you. Know that you are not alone in this. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Months of speculation will be put to rest as the nation's chief will announce changes made to his cabinet. Good evening, I'm Opal Roach and welcome to this special broadcast as we await the Prime Minister's special statement. Well, joining me this evening are two well-known former politicians, Mr. Leslie Miller and Philip Galanis. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us in this broadcast. Now, the Prime Minister was supposed to address the nation at 5, but that's delayed until 5.30, so we'll have to wait Another 30 minutes to hear from the Prime Minister. You know, we all have been waiting with bated breath to hear, you know, about the shuffle to the Cabinet. Um, let me start off with Mr. Galanis. Mr. Galanis, what do you expect to hear from the Prime Minister this evening? Well, firstly, thank you, Opal, for inviting me on the show this evening. Uh, I think that we have to recognize, and the Haymans do in fact recognize, that this is a pivotal year. We are at the mid midway point for the government. And while the government does in fact have 
five years in office. So we're two years in, which is 40% of the game. It really, really is the mid, mid, midway point that we're at. And I say that because the last year of the election is really not, not much happens. A, a lot of electioneering and politicking takes place. And often by the fourth year, uh, at the end of the fourth year, people have made a decision as to how they're going to vote. And so uh, one thing I must say about, about this administration is that they've been able to avoid any, any scandals or any major mishaps during its first two years in, in office. Mm -hmm. As to what I expect, I expect that the Prime Minister is going to make appointments to, this, to his cabinet in a manner that's going to ensure that he is able to implement the policies and the agenda of his administration in the next two years mm -hmm. that will take us into the elections. Okay, now Mr. Miller, what is your take on, on, on the changes you anticipate from the Prime Minister this evening? I think those, these changes are going to be very pitiful, um, um, very fruitful, mm -hmm. and very important because this is going to take us, as Phil said, into the next general elections. The government has had a heavy load to lift over the last two years mm -hmm. with the advent of COVID just um, um, passing through. Mm -hmm. um, they have to get the economy back on track. It appears to be back on track now. I think the economy is on firm footing, but there's a lot of work to be done. I think this reorganization of his cabinet is going to reflect the views and the apparatus that the prime minister intends to use to get the job done on behalf of the Bahamian people. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of ground to cover. Um, the poverty in our country is, a, is very acute in some areas. Um, his government was born out of the, the belly of the the average Bahamian, the poor Bahamian, as we call them over the hill. I think it's an awesome task. I think the ministers must stand to the plate and get the job done because this is their last opportunity to do well for and on behalf of the Bahamian people. Okay. It's a crucial time, very crucial. All right. Now, last <coughs> week, we would have spoken to several cabinet ministers to hear what they would have had to say um, in reference to a possible cabinet shuffle. One of them was National Security Minister, the Honorable Wayne Monroe. I'm not the person who has that, 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 that gift within my, my purview. Um, that's within the gift of the Prime Minister. Um, as a Cabinet Minister, my job is to discharge my portfolio until. And when he sends you your letter, you serve at his pleasure. Well, we heard it from Mr. <laughs> Mr. Monroe. Couldn't we say it serve better. at your pleasure. You yeah, couldn't, couldn't say it any no, better, right? It, could, could, it couldn't be said <laughs> any better. Uh -huh. It could not be said any better. And, and in fact, you know, April, one of the things that uh, Mr. Miller and I, Leslie and I, fully appreciate is the fact that you serve at the pleasure of the Prime Minister. Correct. It is his call uh, who ministers will be. It is not for the ministers to suggest what ministries they should have, mm -hmm. uh, which ministries they should have under their uh, have carriage of. And so it's important for the Hamans and for the people for the Bahamian people to understand that it's critically important for the Prime Minister to look at his bench mm -hmm. and make a determination as to who fits best where. Right. And I think one of the things we're going to see as a result of that is the more experienced ministers are going are likely going to be called on to to bear a heavier load yes. because they have yes. the experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm not taking anything away from the younger veteran ministers, but right. this is a critical time, as both Leslie and I said. We are heading toward an election in three years, mm -hmm. at most, at mm -hmm. most, it could mm -hmm. come earlier, mm -hmm. but at most, and so it's critically important for us to put our best foot forward. While I know you don't know, you did say some of the more experienced cabinet ministers both, you know? Yes. Can you give us an idea of maybe who you think may be pushed in another area? Well, I think that one of the ministries that I'm looking to see some changes in is uh, Minister Obi Wilshkom, who's been around for quite some time. He was he served in two Christie administrations. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he served, <clears throat> he's currently serving as a Minister of Social Services. Uh, and uh, I think that he brings a lot more skills to the table than have been re required of him. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to which, I believe that, as Leslie said, we have to focus on social services. That's critically important. Mm -hmm. The poor in this country are catching hell. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, food uh, and, and uh, at the food store, help, eh? at BEC, at, uh, you know, all, all across the country. And so those ministers who the Prime Minister best believes will be able to address those concerns mm -hmm. is who I think he will assign to those responsibilities. Okay, your take on that, Mr. Miller? I agree with every word that Phil says. Um, this is a crucial time. Mm -hmm. um, the Prime Minister had to sit down and evaluate who did what, who has the argument to execute mm -hmm. 
the plans that the government's going to be coming with when the new session of Parliament opens in October. I think experience is going to be tatamount and paramount in getting things done. For example, what do you do with a person like Alfred Says, who has been in the cabinet before? We were elected together well, in, 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 in 202. He was a senior minister. He ran the Ministry of Education, did a wonderful job. He was also the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. He has the expertise, experience and background to do well. So is Mr. Minister Wilson. Grandison Martin has is always done a wonderful job. So right. she's doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Now, the other ones who are much younger, they're going to have to step to the plate. I think they need to look at what the oldest one, uh, the older ones have accomplished. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, um, people tend to forget that um, our good friend, Mr. Keith Bell, was also a minister before. He right. and Dr. Norwich, God mm -hmm. bless him. Mm -hmm. And he has the experience and expertise to get the job done. Wherever they please him, Keith will do his job. Mm -hmm. Now, the public, the public has a perception, okay, a cabinet shuffle, that means um, some of the cabinet ministers are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Oh, it's a bad thing. It can be looked at as the government refreshing itself. It is. It is. Um, you know, when I was in the government with, with Mr. Christie in 2006, 2205 actually, late 2005, there were some cabinet changes going around and none of us took it lightly. Right. Um, we realized that changes had to be made to carry us into the next election. I think Mr. Davis had an opportunity to evaluate all of his ministers, um, see who performed well, mm -hmm. those who might have not stepped to the plate as they should have, and you would reflect, those changes would, would be reflected in what the Bahamians presented with this afternoon. Right. Yeah, in addition to that, Opal, I think we have to recognize that the a shuffle is a realignment. Right. It doesn't mean that you're getting rid of ministers. It mm -hmm. just means that you're aligning them the in spots. the best, best <coughs> places where they, where they belong. Exactly. As Leslie said, as, mm -hmm. as he correctly said, mm -hmm. the prime minister, in my opinion, had a lot of ministers. I mm -hmm. think there were many, many ministers. So in my opinion, I thought it was more ministers than he ought to have had. But, <laughs> yeah. but I think, I mean, I'm being honest about it. But yeah. by, by the same token, I think he wanted to get a sense of what their skill sets were right. and to make a determination as to what they would be able to do to, to contribute to the development of the government and mm -hmm. the government and the implementation of its policies. Having done that in the last two years now, mm -hmm. he has been able to look at them very closely, assess their skills, look at their strengths and their weaknesses, mm -hmm. and make a determination that this person is probably better suited to fit in another spot. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to send a plug out for Minister Halkitas, who oh, Leslie Mike. didn't mention, mm -hmm. who yeah. is an outstanding minister. Not that it's never going to happen to Mike. Mike does his Mike, job. Mike, Mike does a good job. Mike does a wonderful <laughs> job. Mike <laughs> does his job. And, 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 and we, are, we admire him, and, and I don't think there's any chance that anything would, but would happen to him in terms of uh, realignment yeah. mm -hmm. that, would, that, would take, that would diminish his position. No, never. You think we're going to hear any surprises? I think you're going to hear one or two surprises, but you know, you have to appreciate these are difficult times that the government is facing, you know. Mm -hmm. The high cost of living has decimated the poor, mm -hmm. has decimated the middle class. Mm -hmm. When you go into the food store and prices are almost doubled with so many mm -hmm. things, and then BPL, you don't know what the hell is going on with them, mm -hmm. but it eight, it's what, 67, 70% increase mm -hmm. in electricity. Mm -hmm. I met a gentleman last week, came to me, with tears in his eyes. He said, Mr. Miller, my bill, used to be below $300. My bill is now almost $1,000. Mm -hmm. And they say they're going to turn me off unless I pay 50%. I can't do it. No, I need to borrow not. some money. I say, hell, I ain't got it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and something has to, the government must write BPL. Mm -hmm. Yep. It I, has to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, no ifs and buts. No, 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 Leslie, I fully agree no with you. Buts. I think that we should really expand that, though. I think the the uh, uh, focus on social services generally and providing a greater safety net generally, Correct. not only on BPL, but on other aspects mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the cost, cost of living. Of living. Cost of living. Uh, Food. Because mm -hmm. people are catching hell in this country. Inflation um, is I mean, I, 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 I earn a fairly decent income, and I cannot go to the food store mm -hmm. and pick up more than three or four items and not pay $100. Exactly. So I always exactly. ask myself, exactly. how how do the people who work behind the counter That's who, what who, 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 cash, who cash me out? I said, I, how do they manage? I stopped going to the food store. Because <laughs> okay, I when I look at the woman next to me, yes. mm -hmm. this poor lady mm -hmm. from, from whatever black belt area. I mean, I, I wake a lot of, it, or most of the candidates in the black belt. Right. When I think of those poor mothers in, in, in Bain Town, in, 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 in the Groove, in, 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 in Camp Road, the hell that they're catching with three kids. Yes, no sir. man is there to support them. Mm -hmm. The husband isn't there, whoever he is, who owned the children, mm -hmm. have abandoned them. School just opened last week. That's you know right. what the hell them, those women went through? Mm -hmm. 
They did just to give those kids five dollars a day for lunch. I'm so glad that the government's going to implement this luncheon program and breakfast program to feed our kids. Because I'm telling you, mm -hmm. the real life is they suffer like hell. Mm -hmm. But not having the way it all by with, with, with one parent, their mommy, trying to make those kids um, give give them a decent meal to learn something in school. That's a tragic situation in our yes, country. Yes. I, I think, Opal, I think the other point that needs to be made is that we're not saying that the government has done nothing in social services or right. has done nothing to help the poor. Right. What we are saying is that the first two years required the government to adjust to the economy to contain the spillage get and, 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 and get us back on track yes. where, we, where, we, where we were before COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think it's done a fairly effective job of that. I think the Ministry of uh, Tourism has seen has reaped tremendous dividends mm -hmm. as a result of its programs. And, and I think that um, Minister Hannah Martin, who is an outstanding minister, has understood and has uh, been able to an analyze the effect that COVID has had on our children totally. in, in school. Exactly. And uh, we, you know, there, we also had to get our financial services back. Uh, there's been a lot of people, a lot of complaint about people, about ministers traveling. And while I agree that some ministers do travel excessively, um, I think what's, what's important is that we have to recognize that during the COVID era, we were shut down and disengaged. Right. We, had to, we had to re-engage. Exactly. We had to exactly. re-engage with the world. Exactly. And so now that that and has all been done important. and that foundation has been laid, mm -hmm. I think it's now time to address the issues that Leslie and I have been talking about, and that is addressing social services mm -hmm. and the needs of the poor and providing a larger safety net for our people. And the government also need to seriously look at the diversification of our economy. Mm -hmm. How do you look at import You've substitution entities? Yes, um, the good gentleman. The Minister of, of Agriculture and Marine Resources has done a wonderful job. Mr. Sweden. He's sorted out the, the egg problem within a year. Exactly. Hey, you know the price of eggs in New York, the, the price of eggs was $9 yes, dollars, exactly. for 12 mm -hmm. eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's turned it around mm -hmm. and did a wonderful job. Yes, sir. Well, it is also high time for the government to recommit itself mm -hmm. to local manufacturing, to those who took the chance to go in and um, um, use their life savings to try to produce products that Bahamians can use. Mm -hmm. They need to get, get the corporations, the ministries, to step to the plate and do the right thing on behalf of all Bahamians. Because there's nothing we can't produce in this country. We have the ingenuity, we have the background, and we have the capability of producing qu um, quality products. Exactly. It's just like this innate thing in the minds of the average Bahamian. If it ain't foreign, it ain't no good. Mm. We got it from colonialism. Mm. And believe me or not, it's more embedded in us now than when we started the Light Industries Council back in 1983. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a disgrace, but it's out there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay, and, I think and this it's government got to fix time. that. Yes, sir. It's a convenient time for us to take a break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at more things that the government has been doing over the past two years as we await the Prime Minister's special statement. Stay with us. Three years ago, a new era began. 50 years of a small country doing big things. Our faith, our people, and our values are the source of our strength. Together we share joy and survive the hardest times by leaning on each other. Now, as we confront a changing world, we need to grow stronger. That means standing up for ourselves protecting our borders, investing in our family islands, growing more of what we eat at home, owning more of our economy, and above all, investing in our people. Lifting each other up, that's who we have always been. We know where we came from, so we know where we are going. Happy Independence, Bahamas. May God bless us all. Influenza, or the flu as it is commonly called, is a viral illness that usually occurs between the months October to March. The virus is transmitted from person to person through coughing, sneezing, or talking. Symptoms include fever, cough, headache, runny nose, generalized body aches, and fatigue. There is no specific treatment for the flu, and the symptoms usually dissipate after three to seven days. Because it is caused by a virus, antibiotics are not used to treat the flu. Persons are encouraged to rest and drink lots of fluids. Panadol is recommended for fever and body aches associated with the flu. However, aspirin should be avoided due to the risk of bleeding. To decrease the spread of flu, persons are encouraged to get their flu shot annually and practice good cough hygiene. 
Additional information can be provided by your community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Did you know that there are over 30,000 Bahamians with diabetes and another 23,000 with pre-diabetes? Each year, this number is expected to increase. Many people who have diabetes are unaware. If you are having blurry vision, feeling thirsty, urinating frequently, or are unusually tired or losing weight despite a healthy diet, you may have diabetes. If you have a parent or sibling that has diabetes, you are also at an increased risk of developing diabetes. If you have noticed any of these symptoms, it is important to see your doctor who will perform the necessary test to confirm the diagnosis. Together, we can beat diabetes. Welcome back to this special report as we await the Prime Minister's special statement now. Joining us on this broadcast, as we said earlier, Mr. Philip Galanis and Mr. Leslie Miller. Both of them have been sharing a lot of insight into what they anticipate the Prime Minister will say. Earlier last week, we would have spoken to Minister of State in the Public Service, Pia Glover Rule, about a possible shuffle, and here's what she had to say. He has the say in terms of what he will do with his cabinet and if anything will be done. So at the end of the day, the ball stops with him, the buck stops with him, and he is the person that would have to address anything in regards to a shuffle of any sort. Now, when asked about the proroguing of Parliament and the cabinet shuffle, Minister Glover Roll insisted that the administration is simply in reset mode. We're reevaluating where we are as an administration, pivoting where we need to, and setting a new agenda, which I know will be an aggressive agenda and an agenda that speaks to the needs and the concerns of the citizens of our country. Now, Mr. Galanis, that's exactly what you would have said earlier. Mm -hmm. Reset mode, Mr. Yes. Miller. Mm -hmm. Reset mode. Yes. Mm -hmm. And realignment. Reset and realignment. Mm -hmm. uh, reset meaning they're going, the, the Prime Minister has made a determination that these are the things that we need to address over the course of the next two years. Mm -hmm. the, effectively, the last two two years, in real in real terms, the last two years of administration, mm -hmm. and secondly, <coughs> realigning the administration along with in terms of its personnel, realigning personnel in terms of making certain that the right people are sitting on the right bus. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so that you know that that makes all the sense in the world. And and it's it's, it's interesting. I, I found it extremely interesting that this prime minister has really done has had a much better performance record than his two predecessors in office mm -hmm. because I say that because if you recall by January of 19 I'm sorry 2013 mm -hmm. Prime Minister Christie had pretty much lost the um, support of the people because of the, the referendum the, mm -hmm. the gaming referendum yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. In a short time after mm -hmm. a very short period that was nine six or seven months after mm -hmm. after being elected mm -hmm. uh, minister the prime minister Minis also had lost his, he, he lost the support of the Bahamian people very very early in his tenure and so mr. for mr. Davis to have gone this far two years into his tenure and without any um, really major controversies yeah. no major scandals mm -hmm. um, and uh, not have Having had any major fall off on his support, mm -hmm. I think it's a credit to his administration and a credit to the way that he's been able to manage his cabinet. And so uh, we're looking at all of those things. We look at the prime minister, and I'm sure he determined that, you know, two years is the time for me to reset. Two years is the time to realign. Let's do it now. Okay. Now let's look at some of the um, accomplishments of the Davis administration so far. You know, um, the government is heading into another anniversary on the 16th of September? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. this month. Mm -hmm. This month, mm -hmm. that's yes. just a few, mm -hmm. a few, few days away. Few days away. Okay. Yes. What grade would you give the government, Mr. Miller? I would say a B. Okay. Um, certainly they have really did their best to get the country back on track. Mm -hmm. I think because of Mr. Davis' background, it gives him a better view and a better feel for the poor, a better feel of the urgency in providing that assistance that is so necessary to uplift our people. Right. It's been a rough time with, with um, COVID. People lost so many lives, been lost with COVID. Right. But I think he has stepped to the plate and done a wonderful job in getting things back on track. He got the country on a level, steady economic climb. Um, but he appreciates there's a hell of a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. 
and I hope that this realignment now that is coming this afternoon um, would put us in a better position to face the myriad of, of situations okay. that this government has to overcome mm -hmm. to enable them to get the support of the Bahamian people again. Yeah. Unfortunately, for the last 25 years, no government has served two consecutive terms yeah. since Mr. Ingram. It's not an easy task. Not at all. But I believe Mr. Mr. Davis has a wonderful opportunity to match his former partner, our Prime Minister, <laughs> in correcting that. Because I, I think it's really difficult mm -hmm. for a government to accomplish its mandate in that four-year period. Right. Extremely difficult. It is. You try to implement your plans, and boom, he has election. Right. So two terms would bode well. Um, for the government to execute its plan fully. Because a lot of foundations are laid and you have exactly. to build on it. Yes, and I think he has set the stage um, for the plans. Now it has to be implemented quickly. And two years is a short time when you talk 24 months. Because mm -hmm. remember the last year of governance, there's no governance. Exactly. Everybody hustling to get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know, and I, I tell you, time what is interesting, in that fourth year, some of the people who you work with will come and tell you, uh, Miller, you know you're all gone, right? Yeah, that's right, exactly. That's <laughs> they get <pulled. laughs> Then you get scared as hell, you know? <laughs> That's how they feel, because you have no power. Right. That last year. Uh -huh. You only get a hold on mm -hmm. to what you got. Mm -hmm. That's making it interesting. That's why they got to step to the plate, mm -hmm. each and every one of them. Exactly. But I, I'm of the view that Ms. Glover should ascend to a full minister with the job that she has done. Yes. In public service. Yeah, she She's done has a wonderful a good job. She has a very good record. She has a good record. record. She's sorted all of the problems that they have with exactly. the unions. Exactly. And that's exemplary. She, she should be. That's a very, um, um, very yeah, hard yeah, task. Very, very difficult very task. And, task. And she stepped to the plate <laughs> and did has. a brilliant job. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I look forward to seeing her um, get one of those posts this afternoon. So she would be on your list too? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I, I, I agree. I mm -hmm. fully agree. I mm -hmm. think that she's done a wonderful job. Currently, Minister Mitchell has the responsibility for the public service. Correct. But because of his travel agenda, he's not really been able to spend much time, as much time, mm -hmm. in, in, in the public personnel. Um, and therefore, I think she stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. She also <coughs> is very articulate. She is considered. I think she has a good grasp on her ministry. Most level importantly, four, she concluded. She, she yes, concluded, yes, I think, she, eleven four. industrial contracts. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. which is which is really mm -hmm. no 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 minor task. It's really remarkable. remarkable. And, and she so, got BPL coming up again. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's your uh, crew. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's your crew. Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't get me back there. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think uh, I applaud her efforts, and I agree that she's one of the persons who I think ought to be catapulted from a minister of state to full minister, full uh, minister. Uh, 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 the public personnel, of course. So that's a prime minister's call. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. far as the government is concerned, I take, I, I, I think I will probably agree with what Leslie said in terms of grading the government. Mm -hmm. uh, the government generally, I think, deserves a B. Okay. Some ministers, I think, deserve a C. Okay. Uh, some ministers may, in fact, uh, not even get there, but I think, by and large, there are some who, re who deserve an A. Okay. And so when you balance okay. it or when you average it out, I think the government's uh, performance really is of such a, has been such a caliber and such a level that a B is not inappropriate. Okay, so in your view, who deserves an A? I can't. Let's say that. start with an A. <laughs> over, over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to be the devil's advocate. <laughs> yes. Who deserves the A and who deserves the C? I think, I think, I will tell you, I think that um, Glennis Anna Martin deserves an A okay. for the work that she has done. Okay. I think that Alfred Sears, notwithstanding some of the controversies he's endured, mm -hmm. deserves an A in terms Michael of the Keith work that he's done. Mm -hmm. Michael Alkitas, <clears throat> I think, deserves an A. That's three already. Okay. Um, I think a vast number of ministers probably fall into the B category, but I'm not going to call any names as right. far as who deserves a C. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, again, uh, that's a very subjective matter, Understood. and I don't want to really care, you know, cast aspersions mm -hmm. on anyone. Of course, they have two more years left to redeem themselves. That's right, exactly, exactly. exactly. So, yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. Redemption time. Speaking <laughs> of redeeming yourself, mm -hmm. who do you think needs to redeem themselves, Mr. Miller? <laughs> Oh, Lord. You deserve <laughs> comment, correct? Who I'm glad, deserves I'm an glad you, I'm glad you Mr. Miller, that who deserves an eight? <laughs> Michael Keith is for sure. Mm -hmm. But Mike has always done a wonderful job when he was in our cabinet first time. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He, along with Simon Wilson, mm -hmm. um, the country should be proud that they are there. Mm -hmm. Believe me, mm -hmm. him and Simon Wilson make mm -hmm. hell of a team. Mm -hmm. And they get the job done financially mm -hmm. and they're upholding the country in a manner that is, is really unpleasing and one that, that comes with the, the foreign investor and the Bahamian investor that you have two men with knowledge mm -hmm. and competence that hold those um, positions along with the right honorable prime minister. Correct. Right. 
So um, you're reserving your comment on the C? Well, I'd like to see who you point first. Okay, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll get into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, let, let, me, let me also say, Paul, I, I don't want to uh, not address the matter. I think that Minister Ryan has also the yeah, Attorney General. The AG, the okay. AG he's done, he's done a very, very good job. He's yes. been dealing with some very, very difficult, very forceful, very, very, very difficult, forceful. difficult yes. issues. OECD mm -hmm. has been difficult. Mm -hmm. The goalposts mm -hmm. are constant. And yes. I, I work in this industry, and so That's I know correct. it very clearly. Very mm -hmm. I know it very well. He's been, he's been, he's been very responsive, and so I give him a. I, I give, give him an a. He's a very experienced minister. He's again experienced in the before. Exactly. That makes a difference. It's experience. And so that I've not called some doesn't mean that I don't agree that they ought to do the same. But I want to make sure, as I remember that. I, 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 I address it. Mm -hmm. You said experience, so in, in yeah, essence you're saying important. experience is the best teacher. It is. And you know, um, it's a pity that many of those that um, Phil may have in mind and myself, a lot of them don't ask for advice or didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you go, into, you go into office and you figure you know everything. I always mm -hmm. say that the fellow could be an average fellow on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Election is Thursday, mm -hmm. and Friday he becomes a genius. He's God just go in his mind that mm -hmm. night mm -hmm. and <laughs> put on a switch, mm -hmm. and he knows everything. And that's mm -hmm. how you get in trouble, mm -hmm. because you don't know everything. Mm -hmm. And the people who you associate with in your ministry then use that to their benefit and sometimes stay in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful. It's not an experience. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's no excuse for experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also suspect, I, I not suspect, I believe that the prime minister is very acutely aware of who those kinds of persons are, right. mm -hmm. those who will take counsel, those who rely on their own understanding, uh, those who are prepared to listen and follow through based on advice that's given by those persons who know. Sound advice. Okay. You know? Right. And so that also, okay. I think, factors into the Prime Minister's um, and determination. And like you said, as you just said, you have to listen and you have to... Mm -hmm. And now we're going to listen to the Prime Minister's address. It's finally ready, so Good. we're going to toss it now to Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis for a special statement. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. At nearly the two-year mark for our government, I want to share with you an update on the progress our country is making, a preview of some of the hard work ahead, and some news about changes that are underway. We've been in office for just over 100 weeks. On the best days and on the toughest days, it is always a privilege to serve you, to represent you, and to fight for you. We have made some important progress implementing our blueprint for change, but we know there's still a long way to go, especially in tackling some of the most difficult problems our country has been facing for a long time. Change, real change, really comes easy. But we are here to change the status quo, not to defend it. So let's talk about where we are and the work that lies ahead. We began our administration facing multiple urgent crises. The national debt had skyrocketed, with the economy battered by a series of lockdowns and curfews. We had the worst unemployment crisis in our modern history. Our hospitals were overflowing, with some patients receiving treatment in the parking lots. Our schools were closed, with no plans in sight to repair and reopen them. And thousands of children had barely been able to participate in remote learning. The first thing we did was to mount an aggressive rescue operation. We lifted the curfew and ended travel visas and emergency orders. We provided tens of thousands of free COVID tests and free medical grade masks, put together health rules that made more sense and focused on protecting the most vulnerable. We expunged records for minor breaches of the emergency orders and worked hard to reopen schools. We knew many Bahamian businesses were on the brink of going under. So despite the severe fiscal crisis, we made it a priority for the government to pay off significant arrears owed to Bahamian companies. This decision injected $100 million into our local economy and saved a number of businesses from bankruptcy. We brought back festivals and regattas and world-class sporting events, in some cases bigger and better than ever before. 
you trusted us to release the stranglehold on the economy and to fight the virus at the same time, and we did. Our policies jump-started the economy, and Bahamians, always resourceful, responded with energy and enthusiasm. Many businesses are now thriving. We now have a 15-year low in unemployment. Our fiscal situation is much stronger. Our country is in better shape because of the efforts of the Bahamian people, who remain vital partners as we make progress in our national development. Moving the country out of the crisis allowed us to start building a strong foundation for better changes. A top priority is reducing the cost of living. I know how hard it is to pay for just the basics. Prices have been too high for too long, but a global inflation crisis has made things even worse. We started building affordable homes, launched free Wi-Fi in public parks, and expanded high-speed internet access across the country. We launched a catastrophic health care fund to help families through medical crises. We raised salaries and bonuses for nurses who had been our superheroes during the pandemic. In the public sector, we did something long overdue. We settled promotions and inequities in the system. In addition, we paid salary arrears to public servants, which had been outstanding since 2017, approved the return of annual increments for public servants, and increased public service pensions. We raised the minimum wage ignoring those who argued against it. We have negotiated and concluded 22 labor agreements, an historic achievement. And we decided we never again want to be so dependent on other countries for the food we put on our tables. We are working to build food security so we can grow more of what we eat and create new ownership opportunities for Bahamians in a modernized, revamp agriculture sector. In tourism, we are having a blockbuster year, and we continue to build for an even better future. We are expanding into new markets, introducing innovations, and encouraging Bahamian ownership throughout the sector. We want to ensure that investments and opportunities are spread across our islands. In fact, our family islands are a major focus with new airports, infrastructure, and revamped health clinics all in motion. Creating new opportunities is important, and so is making sure more of our people are ready to seize those opportunities. The years our children did not attend school had a real impact. In education, we brought together a coalition of the caring to bring our children back into school, to conduct nationwide assessments, and to start building a learning recovery initiative. Our Smart Start program focuses on job readiness for our young people who missed out on their last years of high school during the pandemic. In the coming weeks, we'll begin our school breakfast program, an initiative that will be expanded throughout the school year. We think it will make a real difference to our children, their families, and their teachers. Our new National Youth Guard is growing. We're giving young Bahamians important job-ready skills while training them to support our emergency response during times of hurricanes. In Grand Bahama, we're cleaning up communities, refurbishing infrastructure, building a new health campus, and asking the Port Authority to live up to their obligations. Building change at home isn't enough when the world has grown so complex. Hurricanes, viruses, and inflationary pressures do not respect borders. So, we are making sure the Bahamas has a stronger voice on the world stage and forging and strengthening important alliances. We are fighting to get other countries to reduce the polluting emissions which are warming the oceans and creating more intense hurricanes. We are fighting for fair climate finance since the Karakri 4 and 5 hurricanes that have hit us in less than one decade have cost us billions, accounting for a large share of our nation's debt. We are demanding that Europeans judge our financial services industry by the same standards they use to judge their own, instead of adding extra burdens on majority black countries.
we have filed an amicus brief against U.S. manufacturers of the weapons that are trafficked into our country. And we have told both the U.S. and the U.N., no, we cannot accept the burdens of migrants in our country. Across the Bahamas, we have recruited hundreds of new police, immigration, and defense force officers, strengthened our security and intelligence partnerships to fortify our borders, and added and upgraded equipment and technology to modernize our capabilities. These are only some of the ways we are working for change. A lot has been done, but there's so much more to do, especially when it comes to addressing our most serious and long-standing problems. Light bills are inflicting a lot of pain across the board, and there's no exaggeration to say that our country's never-ending problems with electricity are holding us back. This is not an area where small changes will be enough. We need to reform and transform our energy sector. We have multiple solar projects on the way in the family islands, but that's only the beginning. Our goal is to transform our outdated and dysfunctional energy generation, distribution, and transmission systems across our islands, including in New Providence. It's a huge job, but we must transition to a new energy future, one which is more affordable, more reliable, and better for our environment. Another problem that has become very serious is that too many of our families are priced out of affordable housing. We believe the dream of home ownership shouldn't be out of reach for Bahamians who are working hard to build economic security, peace of mind, and something to hand down to the next generation. We are building affordable homes to expand options for Bahamians, and we have been evaluating best practices for a rent-to-own program, which I know many of you are waiting for. It's important to get it right so that the program can grow to include as many Bahamians as possible. Another challenge we face, one that has grown in scope and complexity, but where we must make significant inroads, is crime. A number of important initiatives are already underway. We are taking steps to slow the flow of illegal weapons over our borders. We are going after the gangs who recruit in our schools and are driving much of the crime in our communities. And we are working to interrupt the cycles of violence and vengeance which have grown around their activities. We have introduced saturation patrols and expanded CCTV coverage. We are revitalizing manpower and capacity, adding street lighting and cleaning up lots and removing abandoned cars. And still, there's more we need to do. We need bail reform. We need to intervene earlier. We need good exits and options for those trying to leave gang life behind. There are no easy or quick fixes. What we must fight for progress every single day. Each young man we steer in a better direction, each act of violence we prevent, each gang we disrupt, each street we make safer, each community we make stronger, these victories will add up to real change. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to the many Bahamians who are allies in all of these battles, all those who get off the sidelines and join in the hardest but most rewarding work of all, building enduring change. Making real progress means a lot of different things have to come together. Expertise, resources, manpower, and collaboration are all required to implement the policies in our blueprint for change. We are always learning, we are always listening, and we are always looking for ways to deliver more and deliver better. Like I say, I didn't come here to sit still. A few weeks short of the two-year mark, we are beginning a new chapter. As you know, we have a new Governor General, Cynthia Mother Pratt. I know she will serve with spirit and with grace, and will use the position to motivate a new generation to volunteer their talents to strengthen our civic life. After our new General, Governor General reads the speech from the throne, we will begin a new legislative session in Parliament. We will focus on strengthening economic, national, and personal security.
building resilience in these turbulent times, and bringing innovation and improvement to how the government serves our citizens. We are also launching several important reviews. As I announced over the summer, we will be conducting a comprehensive review of immigration procedures with the goal of strengthening them so that Bahamians can be confident that the rules promote efficiency and fairness. We are also reviewing agreements made with investors in years past to ensure they are carrying out the, the commitments they have made to our communities and country. And we are reviewing work permits in our financial services and tourism industries to make sure opportunities for Bahamians are not being unfairly blocked. Having the right policies is just the beginning. Making sure they are implemented well is essential. As we move forward with the next phase of implementing our blueprint for change, some permanent secretaries and civil servants will be in new positions to reflect efficiencies and expertise. In addition, some of our cabinet ministers will also be taking on new responsibilities with new portfolios, as will, as will ministers of state who have shown that they are ready to serve as full ministers in cabinet. In making these decisions, my priority was to strengthen policy execution and to balance continuity and experience with renewal and fresh perspectives. Cabinet is a team. And as on any team, individual strengths and talents add up to make the team stronger. As the Minister of State in the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Jomo Campbell, work to bring important changes to the Department of Public Prosecutions and to the operations of the judiciary, with a focus on adding capacity and attacking the judicial backlog. His leadership was an important factor in improving conviction rates. He has contributed wise counsel on a range of complex legal and policy issues. He has shown he can do the hardest and most important thing in government which is take a plan on paper and make it real. His ability to drive change will be essential in his new role as Substantive Minister for Agriculture and Marine Resources. There, he will build on a wide array of initiatives put in place by Minister Clay Sweeting, who achieved much in these two short years. From expanding education and training, to creating the Golden Yoke Program, reopening parking houses, and investing in vertical farming, cultivation centers and climate smart technology, he has moved the industry forward for the country. As the new Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs, Minister Sweeting will oversee the significant number of infrastructural projects and upgrades that are underway. Pulling Works and Family Island Affairs together makes sense in our government because of the scope of our ambitions for our family islands. With two new airports already opened and 14 more to go, and major roadworks across multiple islands, we are looking at transformative change. Minister Alfred Sears oversaw the initiation of those infrastructural improvements, as well as the very significant repairs which were required to make schools across the country ready for in-person classes after two years of closure. He has served our nation in previous administrations as the Attorney General and as a Minister of Education, Science and Technology. Now, we are asking him to bring his formidable experience to serve as Minister of Immigration and National Insurance. As you know, because of the global inflation crisis, Bahamians are experiencing a significant strain in their finances. Because of this, we decided to postpone a much needed increase in NIB rates until July of next year. This will give Bahamians time to plan and give the National Insurance Board time to undergo a process of reform. Minister Sears will be overseeing those reforms to make the system simpler and easier to navigate. It's important to prevent fraudulent claims and to exploit claims for people who deserve them. NIB should be there when Bahamians need it. So we need to strengthen the fundamentals and improve services and accountability. 
Minister says, will also oversee the enforcement of our nation's immigration laws uh, and will be responsible for implementing the reforms which emerge from the review of immigration procedures. I know that he will build on the very substantial accomplishments of Minister Keith Bell. In less than two years, as Minister of Labor and Immigration, Minister Bell recruited a record number of immigration officers and oversaw a record number of repatriations. Because of his leadership, we have a new temporary detention facility in Inagua, which can hold 800 persons, reducing the time and cost of repatriating those who cross into our waters illegally. Also, because of his leadership, thousands have been deported for immigration violations, and 600 migrants were taken into custody in Abaco this year alone. He has worked with the Royal Bahamas Police Force to target human smugglers, as well as those who break our laws by employing or housing undocumented migrants. During his tenure as Minister of Labor, the minimum wage was increased, and labor on the blocks, job fairs across the country resulted in more than 3,000 job placements for Bahamians. I know he will bring his trademark energy and determination to his new role as Minister of Housing and Urban Renewal. Building affordable homes and building stronger communities is a priority for us, and doing it in a big way requires strength and focus. Keith Bell was part of the team that originally launched Urban Renewal. His experience and commitment to that mission will help to drive the program to even greater success. He'll be taking over from Minister Jobert Colby Davis, who revitalized a housing department that had not built even a single house in years. She wasted no time turning things around, as the proud new homeowners in the Pinecrest and Renaissance developments can confirm. I spoke earlier about how important energy reform is to our national development. If we want to make electricity affordable, if we want behemoth companies to compete and prosper, if we want to create a more dynamic and inclusive economy, we must transition away from our country's expensive, outdated, and unreliable electricity infrastructure. Around the world, as companies and countries wake up to, to the dangers of climate change era, massive new investments in research and development are leading to technological advances in renewable energy. It's a very exciting time, but also a very challenging one. Energy reform can be a game changer for us, but no one should underestimate the upfront costs and complexity of transforming the country's grid. In a rapidly changing sector, we need to make decisions that help Bahamians as soon as possible. Change is urgent, but we also need to make decisions that hold up over the long term. Minister Kobe Davis, is to serve as Minister of Energy and Transport to do the critical work of bringing together and coordinating experts and teams from throughout our government to tackle our energy transition. As many of you know, she has a background in providing legal counsel in the industry and understands how to navigate complex negotiations with energy executives and companies. Minister Colby Davis, whose dissertation for a master's degree focused on overcoming barriers to renewable energy deployment in the Bahamas, is going to be a formidable advocate for our country as we transition to clean energy. When we came into office, many Bahamians told us they were inspired to see a new generation of leaders receive top posts in our government. Minister Pierre Glover Rule has been another bright star in this new generation. She has overseen salary increases across the public service, including increases for uniform branches, teachers and nurses, and an increase in public service pensions and the return of annual increments to alleviate inflationary pressures. She has conducted a public service-wide skills audit to inform human resource needs and policies. She is revamping how government recruits on boards and trains public servants. She has significantly reduced a decades of long backlog of promotions and resolved hundreds of pending matters related to back pay, gratuities, and other matters. She led the first public service-wide promotional exercise in over nine years. She has terminated more than a dozen unutilized government leases, saving the government money. Her work 
has been important to improving labor relations, setting the stage for the successful negotiations of 22 labor agreements in 23 months. I am confident she will serve with distinction as a new Minister of Labor and Public Service. Our administration has advocated passionately around the world for the Bahamas to be supported as we deal with the impact of climate change on our country and our people. As we move forward with our agenda to adapt and make ourselves more resilient, we need to strengthen the work of the Ministry of the Environment to help drive this push for more sustainable development, saying Lightburn will take on the role of Minister of State in that ministry. As I mentioned earlier, we have a strong focus on accelerating the expansion and development of airports throughout our family islands. Airports do more than facilitate travel. They are a force multiplier in supporting the economic growth of those communities. Because of the scale of resource and requirements needed to make this a reality, Basil McIntosh will take on the role of Minister of State in the Ministry of Aviation. His long years of experience of major engineering projects around the Bahamas will greatly strengthen our efforts. While other ministers will remain in their substantive posts, there are some changes in portfolios. The full list of responsibilities will be published at a later date. Friends, our country is finally moving in the right direction. Change never comes easy. We have to show up and fight for it every day. I am blessed to work with colleagues who focus on opportunities, not obstacles. We share a deep gratitude for the privilege of contributing to a new chapter in our nation's development. We will face all and any challenges with a strong and united team. Early September is always an exciting time Across our islands, our children are starting a new school year. They are walking into their new classrooms with more than their backpacks. They are carrying with them our prayers and our hopes for tomorrow. I don't want any ceilings on what they can dream or accomplish. My colleagues and I are working hard to build a country in which all of our children can thrive and succeed. May God bless you, and may God bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Steve, who provided that national statement, and you gentlemen were spot on, I would say. Some of the names that you called, they're right here on this list. Um, you want to let's go over that list. Standing out to me, Pia Glover Rule. Yes. Minister Pia Glover Rule, the Prime Minister called her a bright star mm -hmm. in the administration. Mm -hmm. Both you gentlemen gave her an A. Mm -hmm. So you gentlemen were spot on. She's now the Minister, Substantive Minister for Labor and Public Service. Mm -hmm. uh, Minister Sweeting, the Prime Minister spoke about the work that he's done in. In, in agriculture and marine resources and mm -hmm. how he's set the pace and he's laid the foundation and now he's moving on to works mm -hmm. and family island affairs. I like that combination. Yeah, that, that's a very good combination. I, I like and, that. And that's a very, very heavy portfolio. It is. A tremendously difficult and challenging uh, area because he's got to deal with all of the infrastructural developments that Correct. are required. Mm -hmm. And as we said earlier, we are moving into an election period, which means that Infrastructural development is going to it's be key. it's critical, mm -hmm. and Family Islands is, is also key. Exactly. And so it looks like that kind of alignment mm -hmm. is really spot on, in my view. Yeah, I like that. I like. But yeah, he, he, what's your he's take a very on that? competent person. He's mm -hmm. shown his word over the last two years. Mm -hmm. Young man, he stepped to the plate. But you know, you got to realize that he had experience for ten years. He yes, did. that's right. In the he Senate, did. so he's, he's not a rookie. He's, he's not, not a rookie. rookie. Yeah. No. Take a, and you not. spoke about experience. Yes, he has the experience. He brought that experience. Mm -hmm. And um, he has the acumen. He's done a wonderful mm -hmm. job, and I look forward. Tim mm -hmm. done some wonderful thing in Ministry of Works. I think you need to shake up the Ministry of Works mm -hmm. to get those fellas that uh, produce and stop making excuses. Yes, sir. That's what he's going to have to do. Okay. Well, Leslie, that's always been something you've been promoting from the time, <laughs> time I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Campbell, yes. the Prime Minister, Good man. stated that 
he's been able to take plans on paper and make them real. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's been promoted to the Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources. Mm -hmm. And he will, Minister Clay Sweeting has already laid that foundation, the Ag Yield yes, uh, yes. program, <coughs> a number of Just other. Just to implement mm -hmm. exactly. and execute. So, mm -hmm. Um, Campbell, um, Joe has been a very affable young man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He takes advice. Mm -hmm. I work with him very closely in his constituency in Centerville, <clears throat> especially East Street and all those other impoverished areas. And he's done a wonderful job mm -hmm. getting the hearts and minds of his people. He's going to make a good contribution. You know, the good thing. The, yeah. the other good thing about Joe Campbell, Campbell is that he's a humble person. Yes, yes. he's very not. Much so. He's not at all no. loud. He's not obnoxious. He is. He does not seem to be one who is inclined to entitlement right. in his exactly. office. Um, and, and I think he's a wonderful young minister yes. who has a very bright future. I see him as a governance. worker. That's yes. right. yeah. Exactly. He's a worker. The rum glamour and the chauffeurs and stuff don't really... No, no, no. He's a simple fella. He gets the job done. That's right. Taking mm -hmm. up the plan on paper mm -hmm. and making it real. He's a regular fella. Also, Minister Jo Beth Colby Davis. She's not a newbie. She's been in the Senate. She's a newbie to cabinet, but... She's now has the Ministry of Energy and Transport. Now that, that, now, that, that, and that's, that's your area. Primarily in that area, mm -hmm. she's going to be dealing with solar energy. Yes, sir. Under like, I believe, Place Sweden still has the utilities under his belt. Right. Which is BPL and mm -hmm. Water and Sewage Corporation. Mm -hmm. And what I B think, <coughs> yeah, go on, go on, go on, BPL see. really. <laughs> God knows. That's, no, I tell you, it's easy to fix BPL. You know. Yeah. Fix it. <coughs> mm -hmm. You fix B BPL. When we were there, we reduced the cost of energy our board by 40%. Right. By head note to Clifton. The first week, we spent about a year at Clifton mm -hmm. getting all the engines running properly. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you got to fix, remember, there's still an engine down in Clifton mm -hmm. that used to produce some 60 megawatts of power. Right. They just left the engine, abandoned it. Yeah. Fix Clifton mm -hmm. and you'll fix our energy problem. Well, I know you, know you would be giving um, Minister Jo Beth Colby Davis if she some goes. good sound. I'm, I'm sure she will call on you because you have some good sound advice. I was there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. As chairman, from 87 to 92 and from. Mm -hmm. I believe um, that this. 212 to yeah. 217. Mm -hmm. I believe that this appointment is perhaps the most significant, one of the more significant of the uh, appoint, uh, announcements that's made today because mm -hmm. it really announces the establishment of the Ministry of Energy, okay, we're which at. we have not previously had. Exactly. Um, no. It really accentuates the Prime Minister's commitment <coughs> to all of the matters associated with clean energy, exactly. uh, global warming, mm -hmm. climate change. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so not only is he talking the talk, he's walking the walk. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, Minister Colby Davis is going to do a very good job. She's done a good job at housing. Yes. Um, and I think she's going to bring those skills. And as the Prime Minister said, she had her mass, she did a master's dissertation on energy, mm -hmm. um, on okay. renewable energy. And so she is, this is not a, while it, it's a new ministry. Right. Yeah. This is new, something that, that, she, that, that she's, she's first really in. Met. That's correct. Exactly. Yes. She's the, first the, in. The Bahamas has been pushed in revolting to solar energy. Mm -hmm. I think maybe people need to know, though, that in the state of California and the state of Florida, where they have sun just as tense as we, as mm -hmm. tense as we have, less than 5% of the grid goes on solar, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. solar is very, very expensive. Yeah. Okay? Now, people expect that solar is something cheap. Mm -hmm. It's not. No, it's not. That's why it takes so much time. Mm -hmm. Only the rich countries mm -hmm. have solar, you know. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia and, the other, and Sweden and those countries mm -hmm. that also produce oil has converted to solar because of the expense associated with it. Thermal energy is another thing. Everybody forget LNG. Mm -hmm. Then we had the opportunity. <laughs> Okay. Now, we missed that boat. LNG is going to cost us about $100 million to put a regasification terminal down at Clifton. And you've been preaching that yeah. for years. Well, we had it from, two, from, from 203. Yes. And we, we didn't run with it, so now we're going to suffer for it. But B, B, BPL is going to be the biggest problem that the government has to face and solve. So government has I to face that problem. That's a major we problem that government has to face. Yes, sir. The cost of energy must come down. Mm -hmm. The level. Do you realize that in Florida, to pay, the monthly payment on a Florida bill for a hotel like Atlantis is half what Atlantis paid. Atlantis now paying BC $4 million a month. A month, a month. Wow. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, Leslie, you make the point about the cost of solar energy, and you're absolutely right. It is costly. However, 
the cost of photovoltaic te technology has been coming down mm -hmm. uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. So much so that a number of persons in the Bahamas who I know have solarized their homes yes. have uh, <clears throat> are now completely off the grid. Which means that yes, there's this upfront cost. Mm -hmm. There is an initial cost, which is pretty prohibitive that most people can't afford. Exactly. But if we could find a way to incorporate the cost of uh, solar into the mortgage payments. You can mm -hmm. pay it over time and it'll pay for itself within about three to five years. Mm -hmm. So after five years at maximum, you're getting you get, it, you, 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 you free, you know, uh, free, free, free energy. With the Chinese when we were there between 212 and 216, and we were trying to implement a program where BEC would get the solar panels from China direct, mm -hmm. provide you with the, with, with the panels. Right. You pay us a certain amount and it cuts your bill in half. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. People have to get out of the box mm -hmm. and there's realize that there's a whole hell of a lot of things out there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they exactly. can't sit at their desk and believe mm -hmm. that the world is the same. It's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's hope that the people at BPL step to the plate, eh? Okay, let's, so let's get back to our list. There's one more name on the list so far. Uh, Zane Lightburn, he's been moved to the Ministry of Environment. Your take on that, Mr. Galanos? Um, again, I think it, it, it That's shows... That's a heavy ministry as well. It, it is, it is, it is mm -hmm. a heavy ministry. And I think that, you know, he has been a very hard worker in education. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think Zane is, again, the, one of those guys, like one of the persons like Jomo Campbell, yes. who, again, is, you know, uh, very humble. And very he's ready to listen. He is affable. Gets it he, is, done. he gets it done. And so I have very high marks for Zane. Um, and I think he's going to bring a lot of positive results to that ministry. I believe the combination of Zane and, and Warren Miller yes. is going to do wonders because yes. Warren has done a wonderful job in his a ministry over the summer. Very good team. Clean up program. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The government is going to launch this new program mm -hmm. now called Restoration Bahamas in collaboration with Minister Keith Bell as well as Warren Miller and those. I think you're going to see some, some transformative, positive mm -hmm. things take place mm -hmm. in the communities between now and Christmas. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a program that's going to be fully implemented very shortly. Well, those weeks of speculation, months of speculation, now laid to rest, now laid to rest, and the Prime Minister did not call every mm -hmm. cabinet no, post, no. right? No. Um, no. But my understanding is that a number of them will remain in place, and like the Prime Minister said, it's time to reset, mm -hmm. recharge, and move in the right direction. So the shuffle is a means of setting the pace for the next half. Ah. Yes. Then, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't miss this opportunity. This is the final stretch. Is it? Yeah. The not, final I'm, stretch. Yeah. Stretch I'm, right. I'm not sure, uh, Opal, did you mention Alfred Sears in this new role as Minister of yes. Immigration? Minister Sears is Minister of Immigration, well Minister of immigration, immigration and, and National security. Insurance. Yes, yes. Like you guys, yes. like, like you gentlemen stated. Again, experience. Experience. That, that's a demonstration yes. of his experience and experience. maturity. And uh, I think, uh, well, I think, I know the Prime Minister recognizes that both of those are critically important areas. Yes. We have got to make a determination as to what's going to happen with respect to national insurance over the next year, as yes. he uh, anticipated. That's been a topical issue in the news. That's right. Yes. Yes. And secondly, immigration is, uh, is, is the perennial. That is yes. the perennial 100,000 gorilla in a room. Mm -hmm. And it is not going to go away. If there's anybody who is going to be able to address that, I think, in a sanguine way, yes. uh, Alfred Sears is the person. And so I think that that's a very good thing. Um, so I think, you know, by and large, I think these realignments um, are really excellent. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the, the benefits of the appointments that have been made. I'm looking forward also to the Prime Minister alluded to the fact that he has not named everybody. Correct. That Including the appointment of secretaries Prime and others. Secretaries, that's right. exactly. That's right. That's right. And exactly. I think that's going to be so, an interesting development. Yes. Very important. So yeah. it's a yeah. wait and see. Very important. Right. It's a that's wait right. and see. But this is a, an excellent start. This is a start. Yeah. An excellent start. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining us on this thank broadcast. You for looking forward to speaking with you in the future. Can I, can I say one thing April, before, uh, yes, April, before we go? Mm -hmm. um, when we were talking about ministers and uh, the grades that we would give them, we didn't mention um, the TPM, mm -hmm. and I have to take my hat off to him. Yes, yes. he's done. He's, been he's done a, a very good job. An excellent job. Very good right. job. And, uh, you know, we didn't know. What, what, I, I think we, we didn't mention him, but, but tourism. He has really Deputy restored Prime tourism Minister. to pre he to pre COVID has. Uh, has. levels, and I think he's done a remarkable job. And he's a hard worker. And very so, hard worker. Again, I think you know the Prime Minister recognizing that kept uh -huh. him in that position, um, and so. 
we're hoping that we're going to continue to see that that uh, ministry grow. And he's still yes, responsible sir. for aviation, also. That's right. Yes. That's right. As well as foreign investments. Exactly. He, has, he has a lot to he do. He has a lot. But tourism is pretty much taking care of itself. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. They've already said the stage. He has a good crop of men and women working with him. He does. But I was somewhat taken aback when they took down um, my good buddy. Um, um, Louis Stokes building. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> but 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 that's needed. That's, that's, that's another that's, show. That's yes, another show that's for another, another time. Show. That's another, <laughs> another show. Time that's another show. That's another show. That's a whole eyesore. <laughs> <laughs> East Street East Street East. It's an eyesore. The revitalization yeah, yeah, yeah. of the And more needs to come. More needs to come down. Exactly. I would like to see the rest come down. So Louis building was one of the newest buildings on B Street. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna get back together on that, and we can discuss that at a later date. Sounds good. That sounds good. Wonderful. All right. So be sure to tune into the into the Bahamas tonight to hear more from the Prime Minister's national statement as he announced the reshuffle of his cabinet. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, everyone. And good luck. Hospitals Authority and the Princess Margaret Hospital advise the public that only emergency cases are encouraged to utilize the emergency department at the Princess Margaret Hospital.